All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Bobby just said, I'm Tim Stamler. I'm a first year PhD student from UT Austin. And I'm here today to talk to you about lightweight data center packet processing with RMT TCP. First, I'd like to talk about the problem that we're trying to address. Uh, earlier today, we talked a bit about how networks are getting faster while CPUs are not. And one of the biggest applications where this has been uh, hit the hardest uh, are data center applications, particularly ones that rely on being able to take lots of connections and process them quickly. Uh, they're getting more and more packets, but only being able to process the packets at the same speeds, and so more and more time is being spent processing packets instead of doing useful operations. Now, some solutions do exist to this problem, such as TCP segmentation and checksum offload, uh, kernel bypass architectures, which uh, go around the kernel entirely to try to improve performance, and RDMA. Um, but for these types of data center applications, these, the performance benefits from these just aren't fast enough. And for RDMA in particular, it doesn't quite fit the client server model uh, required by some of these applications. And, hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, in, in general, one reason why they aren't fast enough is because at the moment, NICs are poorly integrated with software. Uh, you have wasted cycles, parsing packets on the NIC, reparsing them in the kernel, poor cache locality where NICs aren't smart about where they steer packets to specific cores, not utilizing the cache properly, and then synchronization. And so earlier this year uh, at ASPLOS, FlexNIC was presented, which is a new model, which is a new NIC architecture, which is designed to improve packet processing by better integrating the NIC and software. It was based on the match in action model uh, of the P4 reprogrammable switches that we also saw a bit earlier today. And what we're proposing is taking that model of ingress, match in action pipelines, DMA, egress pipelines, and putting it onto NICs. Uh, some of the performance benefits that can be gotten by this for would be improved locality because we can steer packets to specific cores based on application specific criteria. Um, we could transform packets before they're sent to software, doing things like switching the byte order from host to network. Uh, we can DMA directly into and out of data structure applications. And we can also send acknowledgments like TCP acknowledgments directly from the NIC instead of having to bog down the application with that kind of stuff. In particular, what I'm talking about today is Flex TCP. So it's, it's a good idea to be able to offload as much of this uh, work as possible to the NIC, but full TCP is very complicated. Uh, and it can't be fully offloaded to the NIC. Um, people have tried and have failed. So what we've done instead is we've divided this processing into two, two different cases. We have the common case and edge cases. And the common case we can make as quickly as possible because that can be offloaded onto the NIC. Um, <coughs> in particular, so this is also done with the kernel bypass architecture. So safety critical processing that would normally be handled by the kernel that is now skipped can be done on the NIC, like filtering, um, validating that the correct, this is the correct application for this type of packet, those kind of things. Whereas other things like uh, packet drops, packets that come in out of order, and stuff like that that is very rare within data center applications, those are forwarded to software where they can be handled similarly to how they would be handled in the kernel. And one big benefit of this is we only require a little bit of per flow state as opposed to full TCP, which might require a lot. Um, so I have an overview of this. Um, as we can see on the left, this is the NIC, which is interacting with the network via TCP packets, and then we have these two queues at the bottom which are attached to your worker threads. So the payload and the rest of the packet 
when received by the NIC can be separated. Uh, the payload can go straight into its own separate buffer. And then any important information about the packet, such as the sequence number or acknowledgement number, can be put in the separate queue, which corresponds with the payload buffer. And then the worker just has to make sure that all the payloads and the uh, information in the RXTX queues line up. And then any faulty packets, such as a sequence number that's not correct, uh, those will be sent to the exception queue, which goes to the kernel, which isn't actually within the operating system. It's a separate software stack which emulates a lot, all the required functionality of the kernel, but in user space. And so then we can have queues directly from that to the worker. So if there are any packets that come in out of order, those can be sorted out uh, within the application. Um, then I would also like to talk about my contributions, since I figured this might be a bit more interesting to you guys, because um, my job has been basically taking the emulated version of this, which has been what we've been used so far for performance evaluation, and implementing it on real Netronom cards. We have two of them set up back to back client and server so we can get the full end to end performance of such an implementation. And so far, this has involved programming stuff like identifying flows, uh, steering packets, as well as generating and sending act packets. Uh, forwarding, identifying and forwarding exception packets to the kernel, and then establishing new state for new flows and being able to identify where these flows take place. Um, so if you have any questions about this implementation or the project as a whole, I'll be glad to take them at this time. Yes. Hmm? Oh, so all of these things here. Um, it basically takes a packet from the network, parses all the headers, um, gets the important information like sequence numbers, acknowledgement numbers, formats it in a way that can be sent directly into a application data structure, does that, ignores the rest, uh, gets rid of the rest of the headers at that point, and then also does the stuff like identifying incorrect sequence numbers to forward to the kernel, and then cloning packets to send its acknowledgments back to the client. Oh, so <coughs> we have special packet types that we can use to communicate with the NIC that will allocate state on the NIC for new flows. and. We only really keep track of the few things mentioned up here at the bottom. And so then basically any other packets that, if the packets are poorly formatted or just seem wrong, we drop them. Otherwise, they're just forwarded to the kernel, which should be able to handle all sort any other cases. Uh, yes, so there's another thing you can do for closing a connection which will basically allow that state to be used again. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so up here, so that kernel context queue is basically for taking the out of order packets communicating them to the application, and then the application, once it gets the out of order packets in place, it can then start receiving them in order again and then start getting them straight from the NIC. Is, is that your last slide or do you Oh, that's all. Yeah. Oh, so you don't have the, it's sort of still work in progress. Yeah, so uh, right now we're still working on the actual hardware numbers, but in general, uh, the performance numbers we have at the moment suggest that kernel bypass architecture by itself improves the performance of just flat out Linux by about two times. And what we have right now in the emulator improves on with that by another two times. So it's about four times faster than just Linux and typical. Yeah, so uh, 
as we said before, for data center applications, they're very controlled environments, so these edge cases happen very infrequently. It's not like the packets are going out onto the internet and then coming back out of order. They're usually very controlled networks. That, that is interesting, and one thing that we have, the, the main limiting factor was the per flow state, um, in that fully offloading TCP would require keeping a lot of information about each flow, and yeah. Yeah. So I think the numbers we looking at were about kilobytes, but some of the applications you're looking at were, t were talking about in the order of magnitude of hundreds of thousands of connections at once. So it was, it was getting really close to not being able to fit. Um, but that is a good point, and I will definitely take that into consideration. Interesting. All right. Is that all? Any other questions? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.